Hello everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today we're going to provide an introduction to LaTeX for high school math and science. So let's start out by talking about what LaTeX is. Well, first off, lots of folks like to call it LaTeX, and that's fine with me. I do that half the time too, but I believe the correct pronunciation is LaTeX. Well, what is it? It's a typesetting language, a typesetting programming language to be a little bit more specific. And it's real purpose is to create beautiful documents where you're going to focus on the content instead of what it looks like. It allows you to really focus on the meat of whatever it is you're writing, and then you let LaTeX, the program, actually take care of making it look beautiful. It provides clean, crisp output, typically in PDF form, and it's multi-platform. It can work on an uh, iPad, it can work on an iPhone, it can work on Mac, it can work on Windows and Linux all sorts of different platforms it works with. And we're going to focus today on an online platform called ShareLaTeX. The other thing that's really cool about LaTeX, it's free. Now you can buy versions of it, programs where you have to pay and get some extra bells and whistles, but the main program itself that'll give you the core functionality, completely free. And that's my favorite price. So let's talk for a minute about where LaTeX came from. It was invented by Don Newth in the 1970s in order to create a programming book. And it's been incorporated into a large number of both free and commercial packages. And there are also tons of extensions you can add into LaTeX as you're going as well. The main advantage of LaTeX, especially as you get into complex documents with lots of symbols and formulas, uh, graphics, things like that, and you want to be able to edit it easily, focusing again on the content instead of the formatting, it's wonderful for. But why do we do this in high school? There are lots of good reasons. Students can focus on content, not appearance, and help students organize their work. It builds technical writing skills. It enhances peer collaboration. It promotes pride in their work. It's a great way to develop a showpiece for college admissions. It builds basic coding skills and provides a strong differentiator. For future studies. And did Mr. F mention it's free? So, can we talk about how to use LaTeX? I bet it's super duper hard. It's actually not bad at all, tasty, snackable. Once you have the basic syntax down, it can be a very efficient way to create perfectly beautiful documents. So, how do we go about actually using LaTeX, building projects in LaTeX? Well, we're going to talk about that now, and to do that, we're going to use a free online open source program called sharelatech.com. You can create a free account there. recommend you do that now. Another online free LaTeX program is called overleaf.com. They're both fantastic, both free to get started, both have uh, paid levels of subscriptions if you want more bells and whistles, but the free version will work fine for us for today. So create an account there, and then when you get to your home screen, it should look kind of like this. And what I'm going to do using sharelatech.com is I'm going to create a new blank project. We'll call this sample project, I suppose, and create. And what we have once this loads up, on the left-hand side, we have our file navigator. Here's the code of our LaTeX that creates our file, and over here on the right is what it looks like when it's all rendered out. Now, when you create a blank project in sharelatech.com, it adds a couple things in here to begin with that I'm going to clean out just so we're completely blank as we get started. So the key things we need, first off, we have our document class command. And all commands in LaTeX have the same format. Let's focus on that here on line six for a second. We start with the backward slash, name of the command. Then we have square brackets for any options. Any options go inside the square brackets, and we put arguments inside curly brackets. So that's our generic command structure for the entire programming language. Notice that the commands we already have here, document, class, begin, and end, already are there. They start with the backward slash, and they have arguments, article, document, document. And we'll see this general format repeated again and again and again. I'm going to type in some plain text. This is plain text. Paragraphs are delimited with a space between the lines of code. I'll keep this going by adding another sentence. Recompile it, and there it is. There is our 
first paragraph. Now, when you look there, you'll see it's automatically indented. If you're using Internet Explorer, one heads up item, though, it's not completely compatible with Share Latex. So what you can do is go over here to menu and under PDF viewer, if you're using Internet Explorer, change that to native and it should work a bit better. All right, so there's our first paragraph. Paragraphs are just text in the code and you separate the paragraphs with a line between them. So if I want to, if I want to add another paragraph, we'll just leave a blank line in here and do our second paragraph. This is my second paragraph. It's not quite as exciting as the first, but it gets the job done. If I come over here and recompile it, there's my next paragraph. But what if you don't want to indent a paragraph? Well, that's easy to take care of too. The command you use is backward slash no indent. So this is my third paragraph. It's short, cute, and not indented. Because it's right after the no indent command, when I recompile it, you'll see over here on the right that this one is not indented. The other nice thing we can talk about here is we don't have to turn that no indent off. Our next paragraph again should be automatically indented. This is my fourth paragraph. It should be automatically indented again. Isn't that fantastic? And we'll recompile it. And there we go. There's our document so far. Nothing overly thrilling yet, but you're starting to see how these commands work, I hope. Now, if we don't want this no indent in here, there are a couple different things we could do. One of the important things we're going to talk about is adding comments to your document so that you can see what things are where, especially as it gets more complex. Anything that begins with the percent sign, see it turns green, is automatically ignored. It's a comment. So if I get rid of that no indent comment or just comment it out, that no indent command, you'll see over here on the right, it gets indented again. If I remove the percentage sign, it's now an active command, and that third paragraph is no longer indented. So instructions start with the backward slash, arguments are placed in curly brackets, options in square brackets. If you want a page break, well, that's pretty easy too. Backward slash, page break. This is a paragraph on the next page. Recompile, there's page one, and now we have a second page. This is, if I want to go edit that, this is not a paragraph on the next page. I just get rid of my page break command. And we have one more paragraph. So there's some basics to get us started. If you want to skip lines between all your paragraphs, what you can do is you can add in a little bit of extra programming. You can tell LaTeX to include a package that has some extra programming that changes the way LaTeX works. So if I at the very beginning of my document, add a backward slash, use package, and I'm going to use package parskip. Now notice every paragraph has a line after it, and they're no longer indented. That's what parskip does. I no longer need this no indent command. I could recompile that. All right, standard LaTeX, LaTeX has no blank lines between paragraphs. Parskip does do that for you. Now, standard LaTeX is just text with them, some extra instructions shown in, uh, thrown in. If we want to put something in italics, the command for that is emph. So, for example, this is plain text. Paragraphs are delimited. I want to put delimited over here in italics. I'll use the command slash emph, and my argument is going to be whatever I want in italics. So now I have slash emp delimited there. If I recompile it, delimited is now over here in italics. And you can do that for things like bold and other things as well. This is my second paragraph. I would like the word second. Well, let's make that whole sentence bold. I will use the command slash text bf bold font. And my argument is that entire sentence because that's the part I want to be in bold. I can recompile it, and over here on the right, you can see that that is now in bold. And there are lots of other commands you can use along with these. Um, slash underline, cute needs to be underlined here, I think, that's an important word. So I will backward slash underline, and my argument is the word cute. 
recompile. And now over here, we can see that cute is underlined. Now, if we happen to have something like we want larger text, there is a command that makes your text larger. It is slash large. The only trick there is slash large doesn't turn itself off. That's convenient for things like you're doing lists and stuff like that. But if we want just the word not to be large, I would use an argument. You would make this, our argument start here, slash large not a paragraph on the next page and not becomes bigger. We can also do comments as we do this helps to organize your document. You might put something like a percentage sign to remind you, this is the start of my fifth paragraph. And I could surround it. This is the end of my fifth paragraph. And later on, those sorts of comments can be mighty helpful, but you'll see that they don't adjust what's actually on the screen. Now up here, we talked about our document class. An article is what we'll use for most things, I would think, in the educational realm. But there are also things like reports, books. You can do slides, letters, tons of other uses for document class. But we're gonna skip, stick to article as we get started here. Let's call our first section. Uh, let's go with introduction, why not? Backward slash section is my command. My argument is introduction. Recompile, and there it is. After a couple paragraphs, well, let's put in a subsection. Slash subsection, introduction, I don't know, we'll call this paragraphs. Why not? There's our subsection. Now, as we get to our fifth paragraph, though, let's make that its own new section. Slash section. We'll call this one another section. And automatically, we get in our different headings. If we don't want the numbering to go with them, after the slash section, we can put an asterisk there. And the number goes away. If I take the asterisk back out, the number comes right back. So there's what we can do as far as organization, sections and subsections. Really slick. And then if you have to move things around, it'll automatically take care of the numbering. And really, once you build the format, the basic uh, underlying structure of your document, you can really focus more on the content. So lots of times I'll make one document, spend some time getting all the code correctly. Then if I want another document that's remotely similar, I copy over the initial one and just change the content. And we'll also talk about some of the packages you can use. Um, the packages that will come up quite commonly um, things like Hyperref. This one is great for hyperlinks. Graphic X, if you're going to use images and inserting images. Float is a way that helps you place images more accurately. Uh, the package GenSymb is generic symbols. And if you want prettier math symbols, AMS Math will work. Tix, PGF Plots, and PGF Plots Table all allow you to do some nifty things with graphs and graphics. And down below, we also have a list of some more uh, packages that might not be as common for lab reports, but you might find a use for. And you'll find tons more of these. A quick little Google search, you'll find all sorts of examples and great help, uh, help samples, things like that. Wonderful online uh, resources to help you. And we'll make a new section to play with here. Section, and we'll call this one Playtime, perhaps. And in playtime, we'll do things like put some formulas here and things like that. Let's try placing, oops, I should type in the right side. Let's try placing a formula here. And in LaTeX, we have two different types of formulas or math expressions. Inline equations that are in the text are surrounded by dollar sign symbols. If we want them on a new line, they're called display equations, and we surround them by two dollar sign symbols. Two dollar signs in front and two dollar signs in the back. So if we wanted to put a formula here in line, I would put, let's put the formula right before the word here. Dollar and dollar, and then whatever is inside those becomes our formula. There's a really simple formula, x. And there it is right there. Not an overly helpful formula. So how about y equals mx plus b? That's displayed in line. 
On the other hand, if I wanted it on a completely new line, I could put two dollar signs around it. And in the middle of those dollar signs, y equals mx plus b. mx plus b. There we go. And that becomes a display equation, which you can see is nicely centered, and it's no longer in line with the text. But really, you could do that with any software. What about if you want to start having a couple things that are a little bit niftier? And here's where some of the great power of LaTeX comes in. You can determine the code. There's a free LaTeX code editor from the website codecogs.com. And there are quite a few others as well. And you can buy some. I uh, purchased one a while back on my computer where I uh, create the equation graphically and it gives me the LaTeX code. Lots of places you can get that. But codecogs.com and I'll go to the equation editor and open the standalone equation editor. So let me move that over here and we'll go back to LaTeX. Let me grab our correct window here. And what we can do is put our equation in the box. So if I wanted to do something maybe a little bit more complicated, F equals MA, that's a nice important one. That's what I'm looking for, vector sign. An arrow over top of it, and now we have F equals MA. I'll highlight the A over here. And let's come back over here and let's put the vector sign over this one. F equals MA. And here's what it looks like. So once we've created that equation, all we have to do is copy it and come down here and in between our dollar signs, paste that same code. Now we have F equals MA right in our code there. Or how about if we wanted to go do something a little bit different? Let's go put an integral in there, something that's a little bit trickier. F of X equals must have hit the integral sign twice. Something with some limits. Integral from A to B of, and let's have that be the integral of 3x squared dx. So there's our code. I can copy that. And let's put that in place of our display equation here and see what that looks like. So you can create really pretty equations here. And as you go through them, there's a lot more you can do with equations. But the online editors are OK for a little bit of an investment. There are a number of relatively cheap, um, academically priced programs you can put right on your computer that will uh, allow you to create equations very quickly and easily. And then just copy the LaTeX code right in here if you'd like. If you want to do things like lists, that's pretty easy, too. Let's make a subsection for our uh, numbered lists. We'll recompile, see what that looks like. There's our numbered lists. Let's put a little text over here. This ends our main playtime section. Very good. And for our subsections, yeah, let's put in a new section. That doesn't look so pretty. Slash section lists. Oops. Put our argument the right way. Recompile it. And now we've got section four lists. If I want to put a list in there, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about three types of lists. Numbered lists, which are called enumerated. Bulleted lists, useful for lists of materials and things like that, itemized lists, and descriptive lists or description lists. So let's start with the numbered lists first. We're going to begin each numbered list with the begin command, slash begin, and the argument that we're going to begin is an enumerate. Notice when I put that in there, it automatically puts the end in here for me, a nice feature of ShareLaTeX. Then for every item I want in my list, I use the command slash item slash item. This is our first item. We'll put another one in there. This is our second item. And a third, believe it or not, our third item. If I recompile this to see what it looks like, I get my nice automatically numbered lists. If we want to create what's called a bulleted list or itemized lists, list, same basic idea, slash begin, itemize. And share LaTeX will automatically put the end in there. And we can do our items again. This is our first item. 
slash item. This isn't our first item. And slash item. This is getting old by now. Recompile, and we should have our nice bulleted lists. Finally, we could look at description lists, and these are useful for vocabulary. We're going to bracket them in begin and end statements again, and the command is slash begin description. Share tech automatically puts the end in for us, and for each item, now we're going to do this just a little bit differently. Slash item, and in square brackets, we put our vocabulary word, what we want in bold. Bulleted lists for example, and then after that, we put the regular code. Useful for lists of materials, as an example. Slash item, numbered lists are useful for procedures, as an example. And slash item, description lists are useful for vocabulary. All right, let's go recompile, see what this looks like. Oops, I must have made a mistake here. Oh, I didn't have a square bracket. I had a curly bracket. And that should be useful for vocabulary. Hit recompile, and there's my descriptive list. Bold vocabulary word definition over on the right. And that's a great use for those description lists. You can also do things like tables. Those are a little bit more complicated. But what I typically do if I want to make a table in LaTeX is to go to a website like tablesgenerator.com, create the table graphically on the screen, and then copy the code and paste it. Works nice and simply. We can also do things like figures with the backward slash include graphics command. And I've got a entire uh, document that walks through just how you can do this in different ways. Um, you can do graphs as well. Um, LaTeX is extremely valuable for things that have references, citations, bibliographies. Easy to do those as well. There are tons of templates available. Um, so what I'd recommend is dive in, play with it a little bit. And on the A Plus Physics website, if you go to, well, let's go there. Let's go to aplusphysics.com. Under About, you'll find a LaTeX guide. And it's a document made in LaTeX that walks through how to do all of these different things, from the document classes, the different packages and what they might do, all the way through description lists like we just talked about, code for tables, including graphics, how to place them right where you want, a bunch of helpful links, and how to do citations and bibliographies as well, including a sample lab report. So. That might be a nice way to go get a little bit more in depth, but really the best way to learn about LaTeX is to play with it a little bit and use that online help. Google is your friend. So thank you for taking the time to join us for this introduction to LaTeX. I hope you find it useful. And if you're looking for more information, please check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks so much and make it a great day.